Hi everyone and welcome to another Nutrition and Food with Context webinar. My name is Serena, I'm a McGill Dietetic student and I'm happy to be spending some time with you today to talk about kale. So we're going to talk about kale's nutritional content and health benefits, its environmental and social sustainability, and then go over a recipe that features kale. So Canada's food guide recommends filling half our plate with fruits and vegetables, going for variety and lots of color. And this is because fruits and vegetables are rich in vitamins and minerals, fiber and phytochemicals, which are compounds found in plants that have a wide range of health benefits. However, less than half the adult population of Canada has adequate intake. So I want to talk to you about a great vegetable to include in your diet to increase that fruit and vegetable intake, and that is kale. So kale has really grown in popularity over the last decade and gained quite a reputation for itself. Kale, or Brassica oleracea variety acephala, is part of the cruciferous vegetable family that includes broccoli, cauliflower, Brussels sprouts, cabbage, and kohlrabi. And there are quite a few varieties, including curly kale, the most common, which is on the tougher side, Dinosaur, also known as lacinata or Tuscan kale, which is thinner and more tender. Red or red Russian kale, which is on the sweeter side. And then baby kale, which is small and tender. Now let's talk about the nutritional benefits of kale, but first let's see what you already know. So you can pause the video or I'll give you a second to answer. One cup of kale provides more than 100% the daily value or the recommended intake of vitamin A, C, K, or all of the above. The answer is vitamin K at over 400% of our daily value, but kale is also an excellent source of vitamins A and C. Kale is what we call nutrient dense, meaning it has high nutritional content and low caloric value. So if we look at the percent daily values provided by one cup of kale, we can see that kale is particular high, particularly high in vitamins K, C, and A, an excellent source of folate and manganese, and contains more than 5% of many other essential vitamins and minerals. Vitamins and minerals are necessary for a variety of body functions. Vitamin K, for example, is important for blood clotting and bone health, and vitamin C for production of collagen, iron absorption, and it's an antioxidant, which we'll talk about. And the nutritional content of each vegetable varies, which is why it's important to eat a variety to help us meet all of our nutrient needs. Kale also contains phytochemicals like glucosinolates, polyphenols, and carotenoids like beta carotene and lutein. Then these have antioxidant, anti-carcinogenic, and cardioprotective activity. Antioxidants protect your cells from free radicals, which are molecules produced by normal body processes and exposure to pollutants or smoke. And this can damage cells, leading to chronic diseases like heart disease and cancer. And kale has high antioxidant activity due to its beta carotene and lutein content, vitamin C and vitamin E. Carotenoids, are also found in other yellow, orange, and red vegetables and dark leafy greens. So this is why we want to choose the colorful veggies. Now health benefits are hard to attribute to specific nutrients. It's more about the food as a whole and your overall dietary pattern. In studies examining the health benefits of specific fruits and vegetables, uh, cruciferous vegetables were found to be associated with lower incidence of cardiovascular disease and significantly associated with lower cancer risk and all-cause mortality. So regular consumption of all cruciferous vegetables, not just kale, is really beneficial. Now we're going to talk a bit about sustainability. Because when making food choices, nutrition is only one factor. We must also consider the environmental and social impacts of our diets. In terms of environmental impact, a plant-based diet is widely recommended, as fruits that come from plants like fruits and vegetables, grains and legumes have much lower global warming potential than animal products, and it's beneficial for your health as well. So does anyone know which of these food categories has the lowest global warming potential? So it's actually field-grown vegetables, followed by field grown fruit, and then cereals and pulses. Fruits and vegetables grown in heated greenhouses do have slightly higher GWP, but even this is more than 70 times less than a kilogram of beef. FAO also recommends focusing on seasonal and local produce. So Quebec and Ontario are the provinces with the highest vegetable production, which includes kale and other cruciferous vegetables as they thrive in or are tolerant of our cooler climates. This allows kale to be grown outside from July to end of October. And you can check what other fruits and vegetables are in season at mangerquebec.com. The supposed benefits of eating seasonal and local foods include reducing greenhouse gas emissions related to transportation, rather than say eating exotic fruit that's been flown in from across the world. 
Keep in mind that production does account for the majority of energy use and transportation is usually less than 15%. But choosing seasonal and local also has benefits like keeping farms in business and fostering connections between farmers and consumers. So let's look a little more at who grows our kale. The agricultural sector depends on around 50,000 temporary foreign workers every year, almost a quarter of whom work on vegetable farms. Vegetable production requires a lot of seasonal labor, and so as part of Canada's Seasonal Agricultural Workers Program, workers are hired from participating countries. So it's about 50% from Mexico, 20% from Guatemala, and 15% from Jamaica. They can be hired for a maximum of eight months, after which they must leave Canada, but can return the following season, and they're under a closed contract, meaning they can only work for their assigned employer. They're paid the same wages as a permanent resident, and employers must pay for transportation and provide suitable, affordable housing. While this looks good on paper, in reality, workers have reported workplace harassment and violence, unsafe working conditions, poor living conditions, face barriers in accessing health care, like lack of translators, and lack knowledge on how to report complaints or on their rights as workers. Workers are also hesitant to speak out for fear of deportation or a negative evaluation that prevents them from returning. So there's much more to be done in this sense before vegetable production and consumption can be considered sustainable. Now that we know a little bit more about kale, I'm going to show you one way we can enjoy kale in our diets with this recipe for a Southwestern kale salad. So I've separated the ingredients into the different salad elements. We'll need black beans, quinoa, sweet potato with olive oil, cumin, and paprika, kale with olive oil and lime juice, for the dressing, avocados, lime juice, water, jalapeno, cilantro, and for a garnish, pumpkin seeds. Altogether, it takes about an hour to make and it makes four large servings. Now, in terms of cost, the whole recipe is about $8.61 to make or $2.15 per serving, which compared to uh, the cost of a similar dish at a restaurant of $12 to $15, it is much more affordable to make at home. And here's the nutrition facts table for our recipe. So in reading nutrition facts tables, we want to first look at the serving size, which is a quarter of the recipe or three and a half cups, then at the calories, which is 510, and then at a percent daily value, which tells us how much of each nutrient the food item provides compared to the recommended daily intake. And something to keep in mind is that 5% or a little is, 5% uh, or less is considered a little and 15% or more is considered a lot. And we want to aim for more of nutrients like fiber, calcium, and iron, and less of sodium, saturated, and trans fats. So looking at our recipe, it provides 64% of fiber, 27% of potassium, and 33% of iron, which is a lot. And most people do not consume enough fiber, but it has a lot of health benefits, like for your bowel health, managing cholesterol and blood sugar levels, managing weight, and in reducing risk of many chronic diseases. At 13%, it's also a good source of calcium, which is important for bone health. Now looking at sodium, it's 3% per serving, which is great and classifies as a little. It does provide 15% of saturated fat, which would be considered a lot. However, this comes from the avocado and the olive oil, which are excellent sources of healthy monounsaturated fats. They just also happen to contain some saturated fats. And then before we start cooking, I have a question for you. Kale should be cleaned using a vinegar solution or a produce wash, true or false? So it is false. When cooking with produce, there are a couple food safety tips to keep in mind. The first is to always wash your hands before any sort of food pre uh, preparation. Then you're going to check the kale for any yellow or brown leaves or holes and remove those areas. Then you can strip the leaves from the stems, rinse under running water, no soap or produce wash necessary. Then after preparing food, make sure you're consuming it or chilling it within four hours because we want to reduce the amount of time food spends in that temperature danger zone, which is the range at which bacteria multiply most rapidly. And for reference, your fridges are kept below four degrees Celsius. So when you are storing your produce in the fridge, whether it's raw or cooked, make sure you are keeping it away from any raw meat, fish, or poultry, um, or keep it on a higher shelf so that those raw juices don't drip down and contaminate it. Okay, so now we're ready to get cooking. Today we are making a Southwestern kale salad. Here's the list of ingredients. You can pause the video, but we're also going to go through it together and you have the written recipe. We're gonna start by washing your hands with soap and warm water for at least 20 seconds, making sure you're getting between your fingers and under your nails. So 
Starting with the black beans, you need one and a half cups. You can use a can, drain and rinse, or you can use dried beans, three quarters of a cup. I'm gonna show you how to cook them. So rinse your beans a couple of times. And then fill with enough water to cover by an inch. Leave that overnight or for around eight hours. The next day, you can drain the water, give it a rinse, and then fill it with enough fresh water to cover by two inches. You're going to bring this to a boil and then let simmer until tender or about 45 minutes. Next, we're gonna prep all our fruits and vegetables. So for the kale, you're going to strip the leaves from the stem. You can use your hands like this, or you can use a knife. Then you're going to rinse the kale under running water. Place it in a colander to dry, or you can use a salad spinner. You're also going to wash the jalapenos, avocados, and sweet potato. I like to use a vegetable brush for the harder ones to get that dirt off. Now we're going to start on the sweet potatoes. So you're going to preheat the oven to 425, and then peel and chop two medium sweet potatoes into small half-inch cubes. Toss with one tablespoon of olive oil, two teaspoons of cumin, and one teaspoon of paprika. Pop these in the oven for 30 minutes. And you're going to stir every 10 minutes as well. Continue cooking until sweet potatoes are tender. For the quinoa, you need one cup. Give that a good rinse, and it helps if you have a fine strainer. Then add two cups of water. Bring that to a boil and then simmer covered for 15 minutes. Then you're going to remove from heat and let it sit covered for five minutes and then you can fluff it up and the quinoa is done. Back to the kale, you're going to need six cups chopped. I would say that's about four or five leaves but bunches really range in number of stems and size so it's best to go by cups. So gather a bunch and cut it into thin ribbons. Then put the kale in a bowl and massage it for one minute until the leaves are a deeper green. It's just going to soften it and make it easier to eat. So put in one teaspoon of olive oil and two tablespoons of lime juice and then toss to combine. And when the quinoa is cooled, you can mix that into the kale. Last step is the avocado dressing. You're going to thinly slice two avocados And de-seed and chop one jalapeno. Be careful not to touch your face and eyes because it can burn and wash your hands after. And then chop half a cup of cilantro. And make sure you are also collecting all those food scraps so you can compost them after. So then add all those ingredients to a food processor or blender along with two tablespoons of lime juice and two tablespoons of water. And then blend until smooth. Now you have all the ingredients to make four salads. So to each bowl, you're gonna add the kale and quinoa, black beans, sweet potato, avocado dressing, and pumpkin seeds. There you are, enjoy. All right, I hope you get a chance to try that recipe out. I did wanna leave you with a couple more ways for how you can add kale to your diet. So kale works really well in smoothies, for breakfast, like in an omelet or frittata, sauteed with some garlic, or you can throw it in any sort of pasta or soup. So it's really versatile. That is all the time we have for today. Thank you for listening. If you do want to know more about the health benefits or sustainability of kale, I have some resources listed here. Thanks again, take care.